So if you want to keep up in the world with doing Django development and doing other Python development, it's about time that we actually start moving over to doing Python 3 development. Unfortunately, this can actually be kind of difficult when you have some projects in 2.7 and some projects in 3. whatever. Fortunately, there's a project called PyEnv that makes that a lot easier to be able to switch back and forth between Python versions. In this video, we're going to go over installing PyEnv and then the different ways to actually use it. And then we're going to wrap it up and show you how to use the virtual env pyenv plugin so that you can use virtual environments with your pyenv environment. That way you can set up virtual environments with different versions of Python for your different projects. To get started, we'll take a look at our system Python and do a Python version. It's Python version 2.7.5. If we do a which, we see it's in our user bin Python. The first thing to do to install pyenv is to do a get clone of the pyenv environment and we're going to put it in the .pyenv of the root of our home so that it installs to a standard location. After it gets done doing its checkout, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add settings to our bash profile or our bash rc file. In this case, we're going to echo out the pyenv root and we're saying, hey, pyenv root is going to be in that .pyenv file that we created in the root of our home file, our home directory. The next setting that we need to set is we need to work with our path a little bit and modify it. We need to add the pyenv root to the beginning of our path so that it knows what Python to pick up. And it picks those up before it picks up the system Python or other Pythons on our machine. Finally, we need to initialize pyenv, and that's exactly what this line is doing, is it's initializing our pyenv environment so that we can actually use it. At this point, we should have everything pretty much set up and working to use pyenv, so all we have to do is restart our terminal. Now that our terminal is restarted, let's run pyenv, and here you get a bunch of commands that you can do with pyenv. And if we do a which Python at this point, you can see it's still our system Python. If we'll do a pyenv install of version 3.4 dot and we hit the tab button, we get an option of all of the 3.4 versions of Python that we can install. So this shows that we have a little basic auto completion there. And we'll go ahead and install version 3.4.3 of Python. This actually might take a little bit, so we'll just skip ahead. And then now if we do pyenv versions, we can see, hey, we have the system version, which is in our user bin Python. And then we also have the 3.4.3 that we just installed. Now we also probably have version 2.7.9 projects. So if we do pyenv install of 2.7.9, it'll do the install of that as well. And it too can take a little bit of time. So we'll just skip to the end. Now if we look at our pyenv versions, then you see we have our system. We have 2.7.9 and 3.4.3. Now, And since we have those installed, we'll need to do a rehash. I don't exactly understand what it does, but the documentation recommends it. So to show off our installation, if we'll do pyenv tab, you'll see we have tab auto completion of a lot of different commands that we can do with pyenv. So that means you have pyenv set up properly and that it can help you along in doing what you're doing. If we do pyenv shell, we can see, hey, there's no shell configured by default for our Python environment. So if we'll do pyenv global and then set the number of our global environment, we've now set version 2.7.9 of Python to be our default Python version whenever we have our pyenv activated, which based on our settings earlier is every time we open up the terminal. Now if we do our Python version, you can see it's 2.7.9. If we do which Python, you can see it goes to a shim in the pyenv. What's happening is pyenv is downloading a version of Python. It's putting it in a specific location and then choosing environment variables to figure out exactly which Python to actually route to. And that's where that shim comes in. By default, the py your pyenv will look in a .pyenv version file. And in there, you see it has 2.7.9. You can change this to what other version you want to change it to. When you do that pyenv global command earlier, it actually will write to this file. So this is how it can determine its default version of Python to use. You can also set your Python version on a folder basis. So if we'll make a temporary folder and CD into it, we can set pyenv local to 3.4.3. 
What that's going to do is it's going to write a .python version file, and it's just going to put 3.4.3 in there. Now when we do a which python, you can see it still goes to that shims, but when we do our python version, we get python 3.4.3 because it checked in this local directory and said, hey, .python version is set to 3.4.3. How pyenv works is it's checked or this current folder for .python versions, and then it walks up the tree up to parent directories, and the first thing it hits that says it should set a specific Python version, it sets it to that. So in this case, since we have .python version set to 3.4.3, .3, it sets it properly. If we didn't, it would go up to the next folder, and since the next folder is the root of our home directory, it would use the global of .pyenv slash version. And you can see that in action if we go back one directory and do Python version, it's the 2.7.9 version of Python. So that's kind of one way you can keep in check what version of Python that you want to use. So you can create your project and you can add a .python version file in the root of that project and say, hey, I want to use 3.4.3 or 3.4.2 or 3.1.1. Whatever version that you want to use, you just set that in there and it'll automatically start using that particular version of Python. So it's great and awesome that we can use different versions of Python. Unfortunately, it actually runs into one of the same headaches of using a system Python in that you can install all of your pip installable files and it still f installs it to the global of that version of Python. In order to solve this in using a system level Python, which is what we normally do, we install virtualenv. Well, you can do the same thing with pyenv and use virtualenv inside of it to give you a lot more customization in being able to set up specific virtual environments for different versions of Python. This gives you a lot of customization, so you can run projects with different versions of Python, different versions of Django, whatever your virtual environment you want to set up. So it makes it easier to write libraries and code bases that work across multiple versions of Django and multiple versions of Python all at the same time. To install the virtual env plugin, you just need to clone the pyenv virtual env repository into our .pyenv plugins folder. So it's a very similar install process to using pyenv to begin with. Once it's checked out, it's simply saying, hey, eval initializing virtual env for pyenv, and we add that to our bash profile or bash rc. And at that point, we're just ready to restart our terminal. And when we do which Python, you can see, hey, we're still using our pyenv Python. And if you look at our version, we're using version 2.7.9, which is the global that we set earlier. So everything is still as we expect it to be. So we'll go ahead and make a temporary directory for Django. We can actually do a little experimentation with our virtual environment and different versions of Python with Django we're going to set our current Python shell to be version 3.4.3 .3. and then we're going to create a new virtual environment by doing pyenv virtual env and then giving it a name. In this case we're naming it 1.8-3.4 so we can designate hey this is Django 1.8 and we're using version 3.4 of Python. And then when you do that it's going to go ahead and do a normal setup and then to activate that new virtual env you should do pyenv activate 1.8-3.4 or whatever name you can give it. You can give it an actual normal name. We're just doing this for easier designation of what that name is. Then you can do a normal pip install of Django and there you go. You have Django 1.8.3 installed for Python 3.4.3 inside of a virtual environment. So now when we do our Django admin version it's 1.8.3 to verify. So if we'll deactivate our virtual env by doing pyenv deactivate, you can see we can create a new virtual environment called 1.8-2.7, which means we're going to have Django 1.8 with version 2.7 of Python. So now that we have two virtual environments set up, we can do pyenv virtual env, and it'll list all of our virtual environments, and it even lists the version of Python that we're using. So that makes it really simple to figure out what virtual environment you created. And then you can better keep track what version of Python they're using because you're not always going to use a helpful name in what version of Python. 
The next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and activate our 2.7 version of Django 1.8 virtual environment. And then we'll just install Django. Django is installed, so let's go ahead and do Django admin version. It's 1.8.3. We'll do a start project demo. And then we'll do a manage shell. You can see we've opened up our project in Python version 2.7.9. And we're in the interactive shell of using Django 1.8. We'll go ahead and deactivate our project and then activate our version 3.4 and then just do a manage.py shell. You can see we're in version 3.4.3 and we're running version 1.8 of Django. So with that, that's really it to be able to run multiple versions of Python and multiple virtual environments and being able to configure them all back and forth different ways. I know for a long time I really hesitated in doing Python 3 with Django because I wasn't very sure how to manage my Python versions. Now that I'm starting to use PyM, I don't hesitate anymore to go ahead and try to start with Python version 3 while still being able to support my old version 2. Python 2.7 project. It's just really simple to switch back and forth now.